That's okay. I'm gonna be picking up from where he was. So la picking up from where he was last stream. And first, I'm gonna make sure it's working. Okay, good, it's working. So, sleepy eye of ancient changes. All suffix, all non suffix cloth items that have strength or agility on them. We'll have that strength or agility be replaced with something else because the stats are not useless for all floppies. Copy. Oh, it's gonna take forever. Set uh set bonuses and their set items will be revamped. Some sets will have low stats of amazing set bonuses, while others will have not so low stats if not so great set bonuses. In the itemization budgets for all sets, unlike in vanilla in vanilla, will account for these set bonuses. So set bonuses won't be free itemization points anymore. Those will unfortunately mean it's hit on to suck without enough items and sets to get a set bonus from it. Then it will. But once you get a set bonus, they're okay. Generally. Yeah. Well, they're okay, yeah. Depending on which piece of the set you have, anyway. Yeah, it's not easy to explain, like... Like you combine braces of a battle, it'll probably be fine. But if you combine pants of a ch but if you combine pants of a chest instead, then it probably won't be so fine, because the uh, pants and chests get the same two piece set bonuses as the belts and braces do, and the belts and braces have less itemization points to go around, and pants and chests do. They get the same two piece set bonus. That's not easy to explain. Anyway, the following list of items will be changed, and all the eight. All the mentioned non-epic items are item level 63, character level 58 if there's a level requirement. Blue items, including crafted items, and all the mentioned epic items are item level 63, character level 58 if there's a level requirement. Epic items, including crafted items. All gear does So basically, all of this stuff is going to be item level 63 and, if applicable, character level 58. Blue or epic stuff. All gear that is exclusively from Dire Maul East, North, West, and from Strapholm, Skullman, Black Rock Spire, and Inner Black Rock Deaths, and excluded exceptions that are specifically mentioned in the design of documents such as Scarab Invasion stuff. The Dark Moon Ferris, Amulets, and Trinkets. All loot from the Abyssal Dukes and Solipus. All gear that is a character level of 50 plus reputation reward from the following factions The Argent Dawn, the Thorian Brotherhood. The Tim and Raw Hole, excluding for a more medicine to and pouch, will be an eye-level 60 and require level 50 you have to wear. It's will be green. Decent area on circle, including the eye of the badges. Sitch Lar. All battleground factions. All equipable quest rewards from the following quests. All Leonard Blackrock Depths quests, as opposed to Adder Blackrock Depths quests. All Blackrock's fire quests, Utter Dan, Mother's Milk, Blood Black Dragon Champion, and Seal of Incision. All Skullamance quests, Utter Dan, Bear of Family Fortune. All Strapple quests other than the Active Agents. All Dire Maul quests other than the Epic Book Quest Chain. In Dreams. Hidden Treasures. Discard Oracle. Demetria. Ramstein. Suppression. All crafted blue items that require character level over 54 to wear and don't require Raid Mats to craft. As well as the entirety of blue sets of items that, that include an item of character level over 54, and a green dragon scale set. All equipment that has moon cloth in its name. All crafted epic items except for silver on hammer, which will be character level 50, I mean character level 60, and item level 65. These items will also generally be re-itemized so that every real is expected to have at least two item level 63 non-set choices in their highest available armor class for every equipment slot. Blue or epic, not considering the elemental invasion bosses, so those will also so those will also be eyeball of these three blues. I'll try to go easy and I have the better one proctor on these effects. Uh I actually don't need to add a part there. I am gonna try to i I'm gonna maintain the integrity of these items as much as I can. The uh memorability of them. The uniqueness of them, however the name you want to call it. I don't know how to call it. Anyway, next up. So, yes. All items from all of these things will be I low 63. All the epic ones will stay epic and the blue ones will stay blue. And the green ones will be turned into blue items. 
Except for these things. They'll say green. And certain other exceptions. Anyways. The exceptions I already mentioned. All blue gear that requires Zilgrove, Ancel Tor, a key raid match to grab will be turned into the animal level 63, character level 58, epic items. Uh, hold on here. Uh... Yeah, okay, yeah. The Dungeon 1 sets will all be item level 63 blue items, intended for general purpose use, with somewhat powerful set bonuses, but somewhat low stats. They won't necessarily be good for raiding. But at least you can do the general purpose stuff with them. Like farming and PvP. Though not specialized PvP. These Skull Man sets will be re item uh excuse me, they're not uh hyper offensive or hyper defensive PvP sets are uh well, it's not going to be as good for whichever kind of PvP you want to do at some or some money. Anyway, the Skull Man sets will be re-itemized so that their general purpose has powerful set bonuses, but no non-set stats. They won't necessarily be good for raiding. Kind of like the Dungeon 1 stuff, except it's got all set bonuses and no base stats. All items in the game that have an item level above 65 will have their item level reduced to 65, with the sole exceptions of rank 15 weapons, which will be item level 71 epics that act as pseudo legendary items. Yes, it will be rank 15 in the game now. And yes, the PvP system was revamped. No, you don't have to farm, you don't have to compete with other players in your faction anymore. You just have to do rated battlegrounds until they get rank 15. Without losing enough of them, and ranking is on an individual basis, not a team-based basis. Outside the battleground thing. Uh, it's on a, an individual basis, in that you do not have to form specific teams. However, uh, geez. I don't know how to describe it, so I'm just going to say it like this. Basically, in rated battlegrounds... You get whoever the hell you want in your rated battleground group that has to be pre-made. It doesn't matter who, who everyone on the team is associated with. What does matter is what their rank it. it what does matter is how many ranking points they have when they enter the battleground. And then that is average. And that uh, has to do with how many points you gain or lose when you exit the battleground. And after that, your ranking ceases to be associated with the ranks of the other players in your group that you had, outside of how many points you gained or lost. Yeah. Fuck it, I don't feel like going down there and explain all the rated battleground stuff right now. It's, yeah. My brain ain't suited toward that right now. Anyway, next up. All equipable blue items that drop exclusively to the silver of the Rosenau Garage or world bosses will be turned into epic items, and both those from world bosses being item level 63, character level 58, and bind and equip, and the rest being item level 65, character level 60, and, be, and bind on pickup. All blue crafted items that acquire materials that are dropped exclusively for four man raids will be turned into item level 65, character level 60, item, epic items. Oh, uh, I forgot. 63, character level 58. That is to uh, be consistent. I don't have to put on the change log because I actually did that last version, but I forgot to just denote it there. Paste. Furthermore, I can get rid of this. And I can get rid of this, because those are redundant. Okay. Okay, good. All loot from 40-man raids will be re-itemized so that every realist expect of every class by realistic spec. I do not by realistic spec. I do not mean, for example, a 17-17-17 paladin spec, or a 17-17-17 hunter spec, or a 16-18-17 warrior spec. No, those are not realistic specs. By realistic spec, I mean Deep Enhancement Shaman, Deep Holy Paladin, Deep Retribution Paladin, some sort of hybrid spec for Druid that I don't want to think about right now, and etc. But not something that you have to be stupid to come up with. Like, really stupid to come up with. Something that's actually intuitive. Anyway, so, yeah. 
All loot from 40 main range will be realized by uh, every realistic spec of every class will have at least two item level 65 epic non-set choices. Their highest available armor class for every equipment slot. Not considering world bosses. No. Oh, that's a very outdated word. That's a very outdated word. Okay. Yeah. And as I said, for the uh, related change concerning dungeon loot, the integrity or the integrity and uniqueness, of, however, of existing items of unique effects, or however, today, damn, they I'll be preserving their integrity, or whatever, or whatever the hell you call it. Anyway, as an exception to the above, the quest rewards from the perfect poison will be I love 65 blues. If they are I love 65 or even 63 epics, then it'd be too rewarding for what you have to do for it, and its rewards would be sort of welfare, but sort of be welfare epics. Even though you have to also kill May Exna and Princess Hoover on for the quest now. It'd still be too easy for its reward. If the rewards are epic. Anyway. Do note, however, that this is two item levels better than what you get out of 10 minutes 20 man raids. Or in Evans. Next up. All crafted epic items that acquire 40 man raid maps of craft. Uh. Delete, delete, blue, and epic. Okay. Copy. Jeez, I have to do that. And it's update. It was updated. Paste. Delete. As of the previous version of the design document, all epic crafted items that required raid master craft were item level 65 and character level 60. However, I felt that that would make it too easy to get item level 65 items. So, I decided to take them down to item level 63, carry level 58. Which is on par with stuff that you get out of 10 and 20 man raids when they drop epic items every now and then. And with exalted reputation rewards for endgame factions. And have other stuff that people can craft. Anyway. Barring Sulfuron Hammer. Hold on here. Sulfuron Hammer. If I recall correctly, this might not be I level 65. No, it's not level 67. Okay. Which will be Z level equals 60 and I level 67. Okay. Wait, no. 5. 65. Copy. Okay, there's marks for the dependency now. Yes, epic craft of dimes like horror, Mary Master Craft will also be I love 62 and carry a little 58. The general purpose of this most tier sets will be changed, though I'm not too sure about the specifics yet. All itemization in the entire game will follow these general guidelines, not considering which class or spec and item it is intended for, the labels will not be shown in game. An offensive item is an item that spends from 61% to two-thirds of its itemization budget on offense. A defensive item is an item that spends that much of its itemization budget on defense. A hyper-offensive item is an item that spends between two-thirds and 100% of its itemization budget on offense, or up to 100% for suffix items. A hyper-defensive item is an item that spends up to between that spends that much of its itemization budget on defense. A general purpose item is an item that does not spend more than 60.9 repeating percent of its itemization budget on offense, nor on defense. It is in between the two. An other or special item is an item that has unique and such or interesting properties. Examples of these include the ring that will replace Edge Master's hand guards, Wolf's Sun Helm, Dragon Scale Breastplate, Spider Belt, Hornet Missile Greaves, Hand of Justice, Greenwell Farmer, and Black Grass of the Destroyer. And those are merely examples of those. These items may or may not be prevented from being a hyper offense or hyper defense with the items being changed. The following items are allowed to be hyper offensive weapons, offhand frills, shields, 
relics, trinkets, items with random suffixes, some other or special items, individual pieces of a set of items, so long as the set player takes up enough of his optimization budget that the individual item is not better for offense than any non-set item of the same item level and item quality, and the, set, the whole set bonus is included, is not hyper-offensive. Items and items that are low enough item level that they can only be either hyper offensive or hyper defensive due to a lack of itemization budget. The following items are allowed to be hyper defensive shields, trinkets, items with random suffixes, relics, some other or special items. Note that they do not include general armor. Individual pieces of a set of items. So long as the set bonus takes up enough of its optimization budget, that the individual item is not better for defense than any non-set item of its same item level and item quality, and the set as a whole set bonus included is not hyper defensive. Items that are low enough itemization of a low enough item level that they can only be either hyper offensive or hyper defensive due to a lack of itemization budget. Next up. Items with fiery, frozen, dangerous, shadow, arcane, or holy wrath, and holy wrath, will be modified in such a manner that half of their itemization budgets will be spent on intellects, while the other half is spent on granted bonus to the relevant type of bonus spell damage. For example, a master's cloak of frozen wrath will grant, instead of plus 21 frost spell damage, plus 10 intellect, and plus 14 frost spell damage, rather than 10 frost spell damage and 10 int. Uh, rather than 10 frost spell damage and uh, less int, due to items getting more ionization points overall when they have split stats. More on that later. Basically, Items of healing will be modified in such a manner that half of their ionization budget will be spent on plus stamina. Which is not useful for healing, so by not earning yourself. While the other half is spent to grant a bonus plus healing. For example, Adventure's Close of Healing will grant, instead of plus 44 healing, plus 13 stamina and plus 29 healing. This and the of X Wrath changes are to prevent me from having to make a lot of blue items and drop in dungeons have to be hyper offensive in order to compete with these green items in raids. And so that I don't have to make a lot of epic items be hyper offensive and that they're better than blue items that drop from dungeons. 10 slash 20 man raids. Copy. Uh. Yes. No item period off but block value on it anymore. It was a very overpowered stack. And you're better off not knowing why I'm probably going to tell you later anyway. No item period of, of bonus to feral attack power on it anymore, barring legendary rank 15 one item melee basis, since with all items being switched on to item level 65, its existence is no longer necessitated. All bonuses to all weapon skills will be removed from all dot set items in the game other than any new weapon skill rank. All bonuses and all weapon skills will be removed from. Copy. One and weapons that are not offense are not allowed to have plus defense on them unless it's a proper on use spec. Less prop warriors and prop paladins feel pigeonholed into having to use a one hand of plus defense on it to take. Bonus armor, if present on cloth or letter, must be the lowest that on the item, and said item isn't allowed to have an even stat split. Let's bear druids rate it in an offensive gear instead of the defensive gear that they'll be intended to rate it before getting decked out of 40 man raid gear, and let's bonus armor be too powerful for cloppies. There's something you need to understand here. In raids, your avoidance doesn't matter as long as you're un unless you're uncrushable. And uh, such, yes, in raids, your avoidance does not matter unless you're uncrushable at all, whatsoever, period. 
What does matter is whether or not the boss can one-shot you. If the boss can one-shot you, you need to put a shield on if you aren't wearing one. Or the boss otherwise just hits too hard. And if you're already wearing a shield, then the boss hits too hard. Or it's in your range phase and you need to pop a defensive cooldown, which means you need to be a warrior. Uh, it's all about whether or not... It's all about making tanks... Uh, I really want to force tanks to wear shields to tank. I am not just doing it to make bosses hit hard, but I'm also doing it by making war by making tanks generate or threat with a shield and about one with the exception of enhancement chance, you're extra frail without a shield. Uh, and then I also want tanks to tank in defensive gear instead of offensive gear. That means gear of defensive itemization instead of gear of offensive itemization. Look, I'm not so good at explaining myself today. Uh, this ain't an explanation video, though. It's just a stream. I'm more advising this stuff. What matters, is that, or, what matters now is that I revise it properly. But when I do, the, but when I finally do the explanation video, that's gonna matter. That's gonna matter a hell of a lot more. Yeah. Okay. So next up, no non-game items. Itemization will Have more than half his itemization budget be composed entirely of stats that cost less itemization points at lower levels. Less people use it in the end game over end game items outside of some special exceptions. For example, an item level 24 blue ring that grants nothing but crit chance will have exactly as much crit chance on it as an item level 65, 63, or even 65 blue ring. Which means that the ring will be exactly as useful at level tw at level 19 as it will be at level 60. No, but no, no, not end game items itemization will be like that. All itemization for low level and mid level and not another non end game items will be composed entirely will not be composed entirely of stats that are just as good. There are just a, will be those items will not consist entirely of stats that are that scale of your level, like crit chance. Yeah, scaling of your level is not a good way to explain it. But whatever, you already said it there. You can just read this here. Anyways, end game Catherine healing weapons won't have less base weapon damage than a non casting slash shield weapon at that high level and high quality, nor will end game casting slash shield weapons have especially high amounts of spell damage slash shield compared to end game blue weapons. So, for example, shut up, though. So, for example, Hammer of the Twisted Nether will not have a fuck ton of plus healing on it. Uh, then again, it's high level 65 anyway, so it's still winning. But yeah. And it won't hit for less damage per second than, say, Brutality Blade. It'll have just as much base damage per second on it as Brutality Blade does, which if I recall is I'm level 65. Brutality Blade. Oh, it's I level 70, so that's a bad example. Uh, it'll have just as much damage per second on it, base damage per second, it's TV's Blazing Longsword, excuse me. Okay. That I know is I level 65. 47 points of the answer to that. Anyway. All hybrid champion gear will have at least one defiling stats on them. On it, less hunters unintentionally desire it. Strength, spell damage, and slash or spell crit. Items aren't allowed to spend more than half their itemization budgets. Why their combined totals of stamina and bonus armor, unless the item is an other slash special item, or is of a very low item level, or is a random suffix item, or is named dual reinforced legging. This will ensure that tanks, and, and especially off tanks, don't suddenly not need a shield anymore because they have tons of stamina and bonus armor from ra Because they have tons of stamina and bonus armor for whichever reason. From their gear. Okay, 
used. Items aren't allowed to spend more than half of the defensive portion of their itemization budgets on avoidance stats, including the portion of agility that grants dodge chance based on warrior scaling. So, for example, if an item is allowed to have nothing but a bonus to agility on it because less than half of agility... And so, for example, an item is allowed to have nothing but a bonus to agility on it because less than half of agility grants dodge chance. Unless the... However, items that are excluded from this will be items slash special items, items of a very low item level, and random suffix items. This will ensure that avoiding second doesn't get out of hand like it did in vanilla. What with warriors getting over 90% passive avoidance, including block chance, with 299 to 300 block value advantage in a race, in max gear. Without market a while or consumables. Without market a while, without non warrior buffs. Of, of a store. Copy. Paste. Well, I'm bomb. I'm bomb. And imagine it with buffs. And as a night elf. Night elves get 91% on buffs. And then with buffs. Fuck, it might even actually hit it 100% uh, without really thinking about it. No. Uh, actually, I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway. Items aren't allowed to... Well, whatever. That's just vanilla class. Like, I don't really care about it that much anymore. Except for comparing it to this stuff. So, anyway, items are not allowed to spend more than half their ionization but Items are not allowed to spend more than half their ionization budgets on plus healing unless the item is in either the select special item or is, a, or is of a very low item level. As such, no item may have plus healing and it's only offensive stat. This will hopefully prevent the mana efficiency of the downranking of healing spells from getting out of hand. Peace. All legendary weapons and idol level 63 epic weapon all legendary weapons and idol level 63 epic weapons must be hyper offensive. Less people use idol level 63 blue weapons for raiding when they have an idol level 63 epic of the same item type and weapon speed to use instead, or they use an idol level 65 epic weapon over a legendary weapon. Of the same item type and weapon speed for rating. Item type, weapon speed, and purpose. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Copy. Paste. Non special stats, for lack of better words, will not be more common at higher levels than at lower levels, except when lower levels don't have enough itemization points for these stats to exist. So, like, ordinary stats. Uh, how about stuff like plus spell damage and plus crit chance won't be more common at higher levels than, than it, uh, that that you didn't see at low levels in vanilla. 
such as spell damage and crit chance, won't be more common at higher levels than at lower levels, except the lower levels will have enough higher vision points for stats to exist. Your, these stats will also be found at all levels. At lower levels at, as well as at medium and higher levels. Copy. Paste. No I no set bonus or special item property will reduce the cool item's intercept in order to maintain a certain differentiation for raid balance between prop warriors and pair druids. For raid. To help with raid balance. By making it easier to force raids, 40 man raids, to bring a druid. A bear tank. Copy. Fixed. No set bonus will be useless in PvP unless having that many pieces of the set also gets a set bonus. Uh. At the same tier of set bonus, it affects PvP. So, for example, something that gives a PvE and PvP set bonus of for three pieces. And no set bonus that is used with the PvP will cost itemization points. Some set bonuses are item properties that interfere with other changes in this classic plus stuff will be changed or removed, such as Blood Fang Blood Disarm Immunity being removed because I want, for example, Blood Fang Disarm. For example, Blood Fang Blood's Disarm Immunity will be removed because I want Disarm Immunity to not be over centralizing in PvP. And, and because, I, because I want Disarms to mean something in PvP to remove all sources of Disarm immunity from players to make this arms mean something in PvP. And the 10 storm AP set bonus is granting lesser lightning shield instead of lightning shield, but it doesn't interact with the new enhancement shaman talent called lightning immunity that enables the same enhancement that is part of what enables the same enhancement shamans to tank like a warrior. Except only against the, well the tank is good as a warrior, except only against single targets. In fact slightly better against single targets. But shit, but they're shit against it. But however, enhancement shamans are bad in AOE and okay against two targets and passable against two targets. Anyway, yeah. No, I don't want to go and explain it right now. You can just go down to the shaman section and read yourself if you want. Equipable non trinkets with a non use effects will be put on a cooldown by both of your primary profession cooldowns. Every time equal to the cooldown used. And using an equipable non trigger of an on these effects will put a random profession cooldown on cooldown for a duration equal to the use items cooldown when used. See section number 8 professions for more information. Oh, hold on here. So basically, if you use something like Spider Belt or Ornate Mental Greaves, they will put one of your professions on cooldown. Or, if you instead use one of your professions, one of your profession cooldowns, then they will put Ornate Mythal Greaves and Spider Belt and other such items that are not trinkets on cooldown. And what is a profession cooldown? For alchemy, it is being able to throw an alchemist potion. For blacksmithing, it's their disarm they get that I gave them. All these things are going to compete with engineering. For uh, enchanting, it's their enchanting oils. For engineering, it's a whole fucking lot of stuff, including their explosives and their equipment. For letterworking, it's their belt reinforcements. 
which non-letter workers cannot use. For jewel crafters, it's their aim of ornamentation, which other professions cannot use, or their stone statues, which other professions cannot use. Depending on which kind of, uh, which one you get, depending on which kind of jewel crafting specialization you got. For herbalists, it's their speed boots. For mining, it's their stun removal every two minutes from their cells. And for tailoring, it's their embroideries, which are certain chance that other professions cannot use. That is, it does absolutely nothing for other professions. Anyway, next up. No item property may grant a player a non-temporary increase to their movement speed. This includes the first five-piece set bonus. This is a postmaster set. And three-piece set bonus of the Primal Baskin set. As well as the Arafi Basin Boots. How about this? No item property, including set bonuses. May grant the player a non temporary increase, increase their movement speed unless it's just their foot. Unless it's just their swim speed. This will prevent items with those properties from becoming over-centralizing and thus making other items suck. Including set bonuses and enchants. Put a comma there. Okay, good. The male-to-play armor progression of shield will be increased from high levels 40 to 44 to high levels 40 to 45. Whereas 39 equals quotation mark male quotation mark and 45 equals quotation mark plate quotation mark, which should make that progression feel a little bit better. Uh, I already went over what that meant last stream, uh, part of what that meant at least, so if you watch that, you should have a good idea of that. All item level over 25 pole arms, so a pearl crusher spear, impaling harpoon, and gargoyle's bite, will be raised to item level 25. Uh, hold on here. I'm going to change the stream side a little. Part 2. Save. Hey, that's better. Yeah, I, all item level over 25 pole arms will be raised to item level... Excuse me. All item level under 25 pole arms will have our item levels raised to 25, but their stats will probably be changed anyway. This means Pearl Crescent Spear, Impaling Harpoon, and Gargoyle's Bite. So far. And whatever new portal I had to begin that actually would be I level 25 or higher. Anyways. I level 1 through 9 shields are shall have total amount of base armor be increased as follows. I level 1 great, 52 armor. I level 2 great, 63 armor. I level 4 great, 76 armor. I level 6 great, because no I level 5 great exists, 109 armor. I level 7 great, 120 armor. I level 3 white, 71 armor. I level 5 white, 106 armor. I know level 8 white, 139 armor. And I know level 9 white, 151 armor. This will make shields not be garbage at very low levels. The buy, sell, and repair values of every item will be changed according to however the items are changed. However that would work. I actually don't know the formula for that right now. And I... It's actually a very low priority to figure that out. I can just look into it in the very distant future if I care. So, well, not if I care. So I'm going to do it in the very distant future, but yeah, it'll be a pretty long time until we do. So itemization and methodology. This section, this section division is especially tentative and is probably incomplete. This is the list of how many itemization points each chat cost, which determines without considering the per class or per spec set weights, how much of each that is allowed to be put on a given item? So, one strength equals one stat. By the way, these are all these are reverse engineered from green suffix items when possible. One strength equals one stat. One agility equals one stat. One stamina equals one stat. 
One intellect equals one stat. One spirit equals one stat. One hit, one hit point equals one tenth of the stat, though this one exactly exists on gear. One mana equals z. One mana equals point zero six stat, though this one exactly exists on gear. Is there a space between here, note or? And the uh, mana calculation is somewhat arbitrary. It was calculated from comparing Flask of the Titans to Flask of the Stone with them. In regards, it should be worth less than two thirds of a health of a hit point because Int has spell crit and mana doesn't have spell crit. One, that is, Int gives 15 mana and a bit of spell crit, a teeny amount. Well, hit po well, stamina just gives 10 hit points and one alcohol tolerance, but the alcohol tolerance is free. More than that in section number 10. Other. One attack power is worth half of a stat. One range attack power is worth 0.416 repeating stat. One attack power versus creature type is worth 0.3 repeating stat versus one creature type. One percent crit chance is worth 0.125 is worth one eighth of a stat per character level. One hit chance is worth one eighth of a stat per character level. One percent me one percent melee and range haste combined is worth 0 0.083 repeating stat per character level. One spell damage slash healing is worth one stat. One spell damage by itself is worth 0.8 stat. However, this is not exactly found on gear. This isn't exactly found on gear. One spell damage, specific type, equal is worth 0.7 stat. One spell damage versus X versus creature type versus one creature type is worth two thirds of a stat. One healing is worth 0.45 stat. 0.45 stat. One spell crit is worth one eighth of a stat per character level. One spell hit is worth point eight is worth one eighth of a stat per character level. One spell haste is worth one eighth of a stat per character level. Do note that this is 50% more expensive than melee and ranged haste. And also, one crit, hit, spell hit, spell hit. That one crit, one hit, one spell crit, one spell hit, and one spell haste come out to 7.5 stat at level 60. While one melee and range haste comes out to 5 stat at level 60. One MP5 and HP5 are actually slightly inaccurate because I have to recalculate them because I forgot to recalculate them in the left. When I recently changed the itemization value of elemental damage. One reason all penetration is worth 1.5384615384615384661 stat. Because it is assumed to affect two damage types, because that's what it affects on average. It's like giving resistance pantry for two resistances. Resistance types. Anyway, one individual resistance penetration is worth one stat. One resistance is worth one stat. One bonus armor is worth one tenth of a stat. One armor penetration, which is never present as a passive stat on gear or enchants, or buffs, while on, uh, while on gear or enchants, it is worth 0 0.1194 repeating stat. One defense scale is worth one is worth 0 0.025 stat per character level, not considering the defense cap. One block chance is worth 0 0.03 repeating stat per character level. One dodge chance is worth one eighth of a stat per character level. One parry chance is worth 0.216 repeating stat per character level. Ugh. Let me see here. In this case, one defense skill, which is equal to 0.2% avoidance for for guys that can block, is worth 1.5 stat at level 60. Well, one block chance is worth 2 stat at level 60. One dot chance is worth 7.5 stat at level 60. And one parry chance is worth 13 stat at level 60. 13 plus 7.5 plus 2 plus another 7.5 from chance to be missed from defense, plus another 7.5 from crit negation from defense, equals 37.5. 
and that and then divide that by five. That's an average of seven point five across all five types of avoidance. However, do note that I cannot get an actually good number for an agility because agility gets different amounts of dodge chance for different classes and different amounts of crit chance for different classes. And again, this does not consider stat weights for certain classes or specs. It is it overall. Well, it's for all players, or however they know. Anyway, a bonus of plus one to a single weapon skill will cost 0 0.2, 0 0.02 stat per character level. Note that only three things give weapon skill. A defined set bonus, a fame set bonus, and the weapon skill ring that gives plus five weapon skill on some other sets. It is an another level 63 blue item that grants ultimate the to his weapon is a world drop. Uh, plus one to all weapon skills will cost 0 0.025 stat per character level. Plus one to one perfect skill will give 0 0.03 repeating stat per character level, like block chance. One stealth skill and stealth detection skill will cost the same. Note that five stealth skill is worth one character level worth of stealth. And that one stealth detection skill and that five stealth detection skill is worth one character level's worth of stealth detection. Stealth detection. And do you also know that stealth and stealth detection are very rarely found on items and have a hard limit of plus five per item. Not wholly elemental weapon damage, such as that of Ice Blade Hacker, but not Blaze Fury Medallion or Storm Gauntlets. These are 42.8% more valuable than attack power, or if it doesn't check avoidance, it is 68% more valuable. Which would mean that it's not weapon damage. Plus holy weapon damage is 70% more valuable than attack power, or if it doesn't check avoidance, it's 100% more valuable. Which would mean, if it isn't weapon damage, it's 100% more valuable. This is not arbitrary. However, this is. Because I do not know the average amount of resistance that the average NPC has. When you include NPCs that have resistances, I do not know how much resistance the average player has when you include players that have resistances. Plus, mana red weapon damage is 72.8% more valuable than the attack power, based on elemental weapon damage, plus the cost of mana getting burned. Or if it doesn't check avoidance, then it's 98% more valuable than the attack power instead. Healing on weapon hit is 77.083 repeating percent more valuable than the attack power. Or, if it doesn't check avoidance, and, it's not we and so it's not weapon damage, then it is instead 108.3 repeating percent more valuable than the attack power. This is not arbitrary, and it's based upon holy damage. 1%, a 1% bonus to 1 stat, is worth 0 .083 repeating stat per character level. Uh, hold on here, this doesn't seem right. 0 0.083 repeating times 60. That comes out to 5. Hmm. Consider making one plus 1% 1 to 1 stat cost 0.125 stat per character alone. However, there's Almost nothing that gives a percentage bonus to one stat. All that's left, if I recall correctly, in the entire game is Bloods and Kings and Greater Bloods and Kings. Which is the AOE version of Bloods and Kings. Anyways, 1% damage costs one, costs one eighth of the stat per character level. Plus 1% to run speed equals one eighth of a stat per character level. Movement speed slow is based off of this, by the way. One Thorns damage equals 0.3246. Three seven six eight one one five nine four zero two three stat. Don't forget that checks your avoidance. This is not allowed to be holy unless it's from a powder or NPC spell. Yes, yeah, so Thor's damage is not allowed to be holy unless it's from a powder spell or NPC spell. 
one physical damage on block costs 1.115625 stats, which is not our, uh, well, actually it is somewhat arbitrary, but only somewhat. And one non-holy elemental damage on block costs 1.87425 stats. Check to see if I need to re-itemize Thorn's damage after having recalculated the value of elemental damage. Recalculate the value of Thorn's damage. One holy damage is... And a holy damage on block is not allowed outside of Paladin and NPC spells because it will be very overpowered. And healing on block is not allowed outside of NPC spells because it will be very overpowered. A special pass passive non-proc is unknown. For regular for procs, see below. On use effects, unknown. Uh, well, it's not actually an unknown variable, but it's really hard to explain. Derived from um, above stats is very complicated. Actually, let's put a uh, C below. I'll just put C below. Bonus block value. It's removed from the game. Fearless Hack Power, removed from the game, for legendary one hand melee races, which is a free stat, and they get 87 of it. To make up for their uh, weapon damage going up, and Feral is not being able to take advantage of that bonus weapon damage. Stat penalties are mostly removed from the game because min maxing it otherwise get out of hand. Now these here are arbitrary. One second of stun per minute, or one dis stun dispel per five minutes, is worth. 0.3125 stat per character level. 0.3125 times 60 equals 18.75. One second of fear per minute, or one fear to spell per five minutes, is worth 0.260416 repeating stat per character level. That is, divided by 1.5 times 1.25, is worth this much stat, 15.65 at level 60. One second of incapacitation, disorientation, sleep, Charm, Vanish, Disarm, Silence, or Unbreakable Rule per minute, or one to spell Blood of them for five minutes, is worth 0 0.2083 repeating stat per character level. Which means 12.5 stat at 60. Hmm. One second of Polymorph or Breakable Root per minute is worth 0.1565 stat per character level. 0.1565 times 60, that is... 9.375 stat at level 60, which is 75% of what the, uh, of 12.5. And then, dispelling one poison, disease, magic debuff, curse, or bleed for 5 minutes is worth 0.2083 being stat per character level. Uh, every item based on the damage, armor, and block value, barring penalties to them, are always excluded from itemization point calculations that consider other stats and don't themselves cost itemization points that other stats can make use of. When an item needs all of its budget has all of its budget put into a single stat, this stat must be reduced by an undetermined percentage. Uh wait. That is actually really outdated. This stat can stay as is. May stat not get reduced by an undetermined percentage when it's the only stat on the item. Non-base stat on the item. 
non-base stats. Whereas base stats are weapon damage, armor, bonus damage, durability, and other statistics that exist on white weapons. And armor. Other than the sockets. Yes, there are sockets. They're all gray sockets. And regular sockets. They do not have colors. Anyway. When an item has all of its budget split between... When an item has all of its budget split evenly between two stats, then it may have 30% more overall stats than if the same item had all of its budget put into a single stat. When an item has all of its budget split evenly between three stats, then it may have 60% more overall stats than if the same item had all of its budget put into a single stat, and plus 30% for each extra stat, and so on. It's up to a maximum of eight stats, or is it seven? I forget. I forget if the eight part is outdated or not, but yeah. That's basically how it's going to be. When an item is much of its budget put into one stat, then the item's overall budget is reduced based upon how much of the budget it... When an item has an uneven stat split, has multiple stats and an uneven stat split, its bonus itemization points will be reduced based upon how many, upon how lopsided the stat split is. That's a better way to describe that. <clears throat> Auras shall be itemized such that Auras shall count as one stat, and that one stat shall have the itemization points allocated to it, be multiplied by 2.2, be allocated by 2.2, and then divided by 3.3 repeating instead of the affected 5, since Auras don't always affect 5 players and slash all minions. 3.3 repeating is two-thirds of five. Do take note of that. When an item has multiple resistances on it, then concerning how many stats the item is allowed to have and how many bonus itemization points the item gets, all the resistances shall be treated as one stat, and then one of the resistances shall have its value be set to itemization points allocated to the resistance, multiplied by one plus 0.3 times the number of resistances, Divided by number of resistances. Uh, there is not an easy way to say that. And then the other resistances on the items will be set to that value. And then any value that one of the resistances would have if it was the only resistance on the item, as well as the scenario resistance stats, will be used to determine whether the item is classified as hyper defensive, defensive, general purpose, offensive, or hyper offensive, and the other resistances on the item will not be part of that determinant agent. If an item has spell damage, specific type. For specific types, and no single class sees more than one for multiple specific types, and no single class sees more than one of the damage types, then all but one of them will be, then, then all but one of these spell damage specific type itemization values will be free. For example, Robe of Winter Knight's Frost damage will be free. Would is it will not cost itemization points, but its shadow damage will cost itemization points. If a cloth item is fire and frost, fire and arcane, or frost and arcane damage on it, then all of its bonus spell damage, specific type values, shall be treated as one stat and be present in for equal or roughly equal amounts, and one of the costs will cost, and one of these stats shall cost 0.75 itemization points per stat, and the other one shall be free and not contribute towards the items total. Bonus ionization points. Ah, jeez, I forget how I came up with the numbers for this stuff. I did it a long time ago. Like, maybe two years ago. Maybe more. <coughs> if an item level over 45... No, if an item level under 45, letter item, has fire, frost, or nature damage on it, has a bonus to fire frost and nature damage on it, or an item level over 44 male item as a bonus to fire frost and nature damage on it, or a letter or male item has plus nature damage and plus healing on it, or a letter item has plus arcane damage and plus healing on it, or a letter item has plus arcane and nature damage on it, or a cloth item has plus holy and shadow damage on it, or a cloth item has plus holy damage and healing on it, 
Four cloth items plus shadow damage and healing on it. Then the mentioned stats on those items shall be treated as one stat and be present in equal amounts, with the exception that there will be more than With the exception that there will be 55.5 repeating percent more plus healing than the other stats. And one of these spell damage types will cost 0.8 itemization points per point, while the other two stats shall be free and not count towards the item's total bonus itemization points. <clears throat> if an item has plus fire damage and plus healing on it, and it's letter or mail, then one of these stats will cost 0.51 itemization points, subject to change. And your other stats shall be free and not count towards the item's total bonus itemization points. If an item has plus frost and plus healing on it, and it's letter or mail, then one of these stats will cost 0.49 itemization points, subject to change. And your other stats shall be free and not count towards the item's to total bonus itemization points. If an item has plus fire and frost damage on it, and plus healing on it, and it's letter or mail, then one of these stats will cost 0.55 itemization points, subject to change. And the other stats shall be free and not count towards the audience total bonus itemization points. No item shall have plus fire, frost, and nature spell damage of plus healing on it, nor shall any item have plus arcane nature damage of plus healing on it, nor shall any item have plus holy damage and healing if not claw, nor shall any item have plus holy and shadow damage and plus healing on it on the same item outs that's made of claw outside of special exceptions, if any. Because those you might as well just use bonus spell damage and healing. Instead of all that stuff. If a cloth item is plus fire and slash frost, plus, plus fire and frost and arcane damage on it, or plus fire and shadow damage on it, then all of its bonus spell damage gets a type value shall be treated as one set and be present in equal or roughly equal amounts. And one of the stats shall cost one itemization point per set, and the other one shall be free and not contribute toward the item's total bonus itemization points. Should an item have both spell damage specific type and such or plus healing and spell damage plus healing on it, then all these stats shall, concern it, concerning how many bonus itemization points the item gets, count as one stat. Set items shall be itemized as such. Each set bonus, whether a player is better or not, shall count as one stat, that is a single stat. A single stat. Concerning how much of each set item's itemization budget is taken up by a set bonus, and if necessary, which it probably won't be, all set items will have an equal itemization split. Furthermore, if an item gets multiple set bonuses, the item set bonuses shall all be treated as one stat. Concerning how powerful the set bonuses are and how many bonus itemization points are involved, let set set bonuses be too powerful. Or by reference, take the total amount of itemization points allocated to these set bonuses. Make sure that the lower set bonuses are not as good as the higher set bonuses, because Rangers plus boots, two piece versus pants plus chest, two piece. And then make the total of these set bonuses equal the amount of itemization points allocated to these set bonuses. Items may sacrifice base damage, but not base armor, to gain bonus itemization points equal to what the amount of attack power equal to the amount of attack power that it would cost to bring its damage back up to what it was before would cost. Equal to that would cost. So long as none of the sacrifice itemization the itemization points Gain from this such a sacrifice are spent on caster stack. On caster stuff. Or defensive stack. On caster stats or defensive stack. So long as, so, so long as all of the itemization points. Gain from such a sacrifice are spent on offensive non caster stats that don't benefit 
items other than the weapon that the item weapons so long as all the ionization points from such attack device are spent on, are spent on offensive non-caster stats do not benefit items hard on any item that has its itemization points sacrificed these bonus stat itemization points are applied after stat splits and associated penalties and in, and are distributed between the item stats with the same ratios as the item stats that our wise have, and these both itemization points must be spent entirely on non caster stats that are purely offensive. Oh, I already said that there, but it's not good enough. Okay, good. Sacrifice itemization points for weapons usable by robes, warriors, or hunters must be spent on stats that don't benefit the players or weapons that are being wielded, lest the items be too powerful. Melee attack power and range attack power aren't allowed since they'd make the item be superior in some cases to what it'd be like and though itemization points are sacrificed for both stats. Some exceptions to this exist that wouldn't cost bonus itemization points being spent to the benefit of our weapons. So, I basically already said this, so I'm just going to leave that there and uh, not fire it, but any chance, so I'm too late. Legendary items will always have itemization points as if they had an even split of five stats, except it may distribute its stats freely across the item, such that it could potentially all have all of its points put into one stat. E for example, plus a one agility instead of plus thirty-seven agility, which is what it would be if it only had agility in this world that it exists. That is, thirty-seven agility is what it would be if it only had agility in that world that it exists. Going from uncommon to common is worth at least one item level. That is from white to green. Going from com oh wait. Uh whoops. A is not supposed to be there. Hey, it's actually uh the opposite of what I want and uh very redundant or something. Anyway, going from common to green is worth at least one item level. Actually, I'm going to replace common here with white. Going from white to green is worth at least one item level. I don't know exactly how many. It seems to be very many. Going from green to blue is worth exactly six item levels. Going from blue to epic is worth exactly six item levels. Going from epic to legendary is worth exactly six item levels, which is a change for vanilla. It needs to be worth zero item levels for the epic items. Plus X elemental damage deals Y damage per second. A weapon of 4.0 attack speed with 10 average elemental damage on it can be considered to be equal in power to a 4.0 speed weapon due to the same damage of 5% chance on hits to deal 200 elemental damage, 4 counting for its reduced critical strike multiplier, which causes the final result to get divided by 0.925 40 second weapon. Jeez, could I describe that better? I could describe that better by now. Oh, jeez. This, however, doesn't account for how non-physical procs use spell crit instead of the physical crit that elemental weapon damage uses. A physical damage proc, although it is affected by armor, can have its work considered like this. A physical damage proc that is a 100% chance to occur can be considered to be as valuable as the amount of attack card that it would take to increase the weapon's base damage by that much.
No, no, it couldn't actually. Oh, jeez. Hmm, that's a big issue. I'm gonna have to look into that later. Doesn't account for how physical damage procs have to check avoidance before hitting the. before doing anything. Oh, yes. Oh, and it's gonna be a lot of stuff to think about next week. Oh, jeez. So, if a proc has a damage and overtime effect, then it can be considered to be worth its but Then the damage over time... Then the dots can be considered to be worth as much as a direct damage proc that deals the same amount of damage instantly, seeing as how dots are capable of unstealthy rogues and cat druids, even if some of it might be wasted, especially if it doesn't stack the Especially if it doesn't stack itself. And furthermore, dots can be used to set up, to make later burst damage become even burst, burstier. Even harder to recover from. Be even hard to recover from. Procs that check avoidance twice, such as that Black Hand Doom Saw, are calculated normally. But procs that only check avoidance once, such as that of Bleeding Crescent, get their damage reduced by 20% due to an assumed avoidance of 20% being bypassed. Okay, okay, okay. Cut. Except procs that check avoidance twice, such as that of Black Hand Doom Saw. Are calculated normally with procs that check avoided once, such as that bleeding present, get their damage reduced by 20% due to an due to an assumed avoidance, 20 percent being bypassed. What the hell was I thinking playing it? Okay, okay. Put it here, okay. So what I'm going to end up doing is making these procs that only check avoidance once, deal normal damage, well, stuff that doesn't check avoidance, gets its damage divided by 0.8. Because after they go through 20% avoidance, they on average just deal normal damage. That's what I'm going to do. Do be sure to separate Brock that check avoidance once and Brock that check avoidance upon contact. Procs such as impact that don't check avoidance and procs such as the impact and chance that check avoidance once and procs such as beast slayer that check avoidance upon procking upon actually procking. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of stuff to do uh, next week, uh, during the rest of this week. Oh, jeez.
An area of effect proc's value is calculated as if it was a direct damage of proc that deals as much damage as if the area of proc as if the area of effect proc always hits two thirds of its maximum amount of targets. Don't forget the chain lightning doesn't deal the same amount of damage to each of its targets. For chain lightning, I have to do something special because it always has thirty percent less damage for each jump and its three targets. So basically, area of effect damage is like a direct damage proc. It's got to deal. So basically, if area of effect damage had all of its potential damage values combined to one damage value, then it would be 50% higher than if it were instead of direct damage proc. If a profession's buff is one option, it is 100% of its total budget, which is 75 itemization points. If your profession spell has few options that aren't easily switched between, remember these are the things that compare to engineering, then they have 90% of their normal budgets, not reducing the PVE portion of their budgets. Ugh. If your profession spell has a few options that are easily switched between, then they have 80% of their normal budgets, not reducing the PVE portion of their budgets. So, for example, stone statues get 80% of their normal budgets, but amulet ornamentations get 90% of their or normal budgets. Amulet ornamentations, there's only three of them. And you have to swap out your amulet to get a different one. But stone statues, if you just click a different stone statue. Or keyboard punch a different stone statue to use a different one. Without having to equip different gear. Stone statues are easily switched to, are easily switched between, but amulet ornamentations are not. If your profession buff has many options that are not easily switched between, then you have eight percent of the normal budgets, not reusing the PvP. The e not reducing the rating portion of their budgets. So, for example, the letter workers belt reinforcements. There are very many belt reinforcements, but to get a different one, you have to switch your belt or get a or swap your enchant out. If a profession swap has many options that are easily switched to the queen, then they have seventy percent of their normal budgets, not reducing the rating portion of their budgets. So, for example. Alchemy gets 70% of its normal budget because there are nine different potions that you can throw per specialization. Excuse me, because there are 15 different potions that you can throw, but each specialization of Alchemist only gets nine, including the three that both of them get. There's three Arcane ones, three Fire ones that only Elemental Alchemists get, three Cold ones that only Elemental Alchemists get, three Nature ones that only Nate Botanical Alchemists get, and three Shadow ones that only, bota that only Botanical Alchemists get. And nine counts as many. However, engineering counts as halfway between this and this because engineering is more than grenades and bombs. It's more than explosives. It's also the parachute cloaks, the rocket helmets, the net projectors, the dragon guns, etc. The stuff that you have to actually equip. If a profession's buff is unreliable, then its budget gets increased by one-third, which stacks with other profession buff modifiers. Instant cast profession buffs don't get their budget modified. Uh, wait, what the... Yeah, okay. Don't get their bu budget modified by the cast time. Grenades get 10% extra budget because of their one-second moving cast time. Profession buffs that are not grenades get 8.3 repeating percent extra budget per point per half second of cast time. Every profession stuff, every profession buff does stuff that increases stats that are used in raids, such as armor, attack power, or plus healing. Then the part of the buff that does that will consume exactly 30 itemization points, with the rest doing things that raiders don't care about. Stuff that raiders don't care about. Non-profession self in the books, profession cooldowns will get item level minus 5 extra itemization points. To itemize for granting somebody a shield, a la power word shield, calculate for itemization points into attack power, into damage, into damage for cooldown, into healing, which costs as much shielding unless it's shortened in its cooldown, into shielding, into inability to crit. To itemize for shielding against a single elemental damage type, multiply the result of shielding versus all by 7, and then divide it by 2.8, which will make it very big. To itemize for shielding against two elemental damage types, multiply the result of shield versus one elemental damage 
type by 1.3 and then divide it by 2. I have not figured out physical holy or holy holy yet, nor have I need to. But holy holy shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Two unalliance for attack power slash spell damage versus two or more creature types. Well, when it's versus one creature type, it's 50% cheaper than versus all creature types. So versus multiple creature types, take the 50 from 50%, multiply by 1 plus 0.3 times creature types, and then divide it by creature types, and then the resultant number has a percentage put at the end, and that's how much cheaper it is. It's attack fire slash spell damage versus all creature types. <sighs> that's a lot. Okay, I'm gonna put this on pastebin later after I've done all the shit. I'm gonna go wash my hand now because uh, I got some dirty. Okay, I'm back. So, yeah, that's how I'm going to decide on what kind of stats items get. Excuse me, that's how I'm going to determine how valuable stats on items are. Now, here's how I'm going to determine whether or not an item needs to have its itemization change. Oh, uh, here's a bit. I should be reading this stuff out to make sure I phrase it right. Here's a method that I'll generally use to determine whether or not an item should be changed and for what purpose it should be changed. This methodology will not refer to the below section division specific itemization changes. Number one, if the item is item level 63 blue or item level, or item level 65 epic, ooh, check to see if spec A of a class that uses the same armor class, cloth letter mail plate, Lacks suitable gearing options for that equipment slot and armor class. If applicable. Where applicable. Fuck, well, after this section, I'm done with the stream. It's probably been like. Fuck, it's already been nearly. It's already been an hour and 20 minutes or something. Where applicable. Number two. If the answer to number one is no, then check to see if the item is, is no longer serving the spec B that it did in the past. Then check to see if the item no longer serving the spec B that it did in the past would mean that the spec B has no more suitable gearing options to that slot for NLL 63 blues or NLL 65 epics. Number three. 
If the answer to number two is no, then prepare to, if necessary, change the items that I associate the aforementioned spec A instead of the aforementioned spec B according to sweeping itemization changes above. Number four. If numbers one through three are not relevant, then check the item against sweeping itemization changes and prepare to change the item if necessary without changing the general purpose of the item. Or, if I can't do that, then it can be as close to as all general purpose as I can get, for example, by turning true strike shoulders from hyper offensive shoulders into offensive shoulders. Number five, if, you, if a special reason exists to change the item, such as those that are not are specific compensation changes, then prepare to change the item. Number six, if an item seems like it's outclassed by another item in the same item level range, or effective item level range, then change it until it isn't outclassed by another item in the same item level range, or effective item level range, without that item being outclassed by this one. Number seven, if a non suffix item seems to be very similar to another non suffix item of its item level and item quality while being of the same item type, then prepare to change the item. Number eight. If an item has not clearly spent all of its itemization points or has too many, then prepare to change the item. This, if this is the only reason to do so, however, no, it'll just change how many of each that the item has instead of changing which stats the item has. Now try to keep the ratios as the same as before. This is the methodology generally used to allocate an item's itemization points. This methodology will not refer, replace that if won't, won't refer to the below section division specific itemization changes. Colon. Number one, determine if the, part, if the item is a part of a set or a pseudo set of items. For example, Savage Gladiator's Chain or Frost Weave Robe. Frost Weave, Frost Weave Robe has no set bonuses, it is part of a pseudo set of items. Savage Gladiator's Chain, however, is a uh, part of a set of items. And it has set bonuses. Anyway, number two, determine how many itemization points the item gets. Number three, if the item is a part of a set or pseudo set of items, then skip step number four and itemize it like another item in its set or pseudo set. If it is a year, two sweeping itemization changes. If this isn't possible, then change the itemization of the entire set so that it adheres to sweeping itemization changes. Copy. Number four. Depending upon whether or not the item level of the item can support it, Randomly select the number of different non-base stats the item will have by rolling 1 to X, whereas X is the maximum number of stats the, uh, that, the type of, that that type of item is allowed to have. Bonus are counts as a non-base stat, of course, and items that are not either, that aren't either hyper-offensive, hyper-defense, or stuff such other aren't allowed to have only one stat on it. Copy... Slightly more precise. 4A. I had said do not benefit both casters and non casters cannot have more than five stats on them. Number 4B. Hybrid items will have more different stats on them than other items will. Number 5. Determine which stats are offensive for the intended spec and the other specs that would benefit from the item. And determine which stats are defensive for the intended spec and the other specs that it's benefit from the item. Number six. Randomly, yes, randomly, allocate offensive and defensive stats of the item, including randomizing, including the randomizing how much of the itemization budget is spent on each stat. While well, adhering to sweeping itemization changes and the itemization formula. Copy the itemization formula that it already went over. How much each stat costs. Paste. Here we go. Hashtag. Number seven. Compare the results thus far to other items within its item level range that could serve the same general purpose. If step number six of the other itemization. If step number six right here. Uh, calls for this item to be re itemized and go back to step four of this itemization methodology. If the item could be used for a different purpose, by a different spec or different class or not, 
and it would be significantly better at that purpose than an item that it's designed for that purpose, then go back to set up for this timeization methodology. Number nine. If the item has to create its name to what it does is anti-thematic, or its being thematic is necessitated, and it is not thematic enough, then go back to step number four. Number ten. If the item can play a significant factor in enabling spell clicks on failing belief or otherwise breaking the game, then go back to step number four. Devoid stats, excluding special stats, counts as offensive stats. Strength. Agility, which counts as half offensive and half defensive. Int, which counts as offensive for healers. 12% of this counts as offensive for non-healers, while the other 88% of it counts as defensive for non-healers. Attack power. Range attack power. If this is picked for re-automization, if this that is picked for re If picked for reanimation, okay, that will be useful. Copy, paste, 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 paste. paste. I had used to write this design document under the assumption that I had somehow get flipped to do some of this stuff for me. However, I no longer write it under this assumption because I have no faith in Blizzard, even if they are uh, somehow made by the player base to do what I say. Because they're just too underhanded and incompetent because of their greed. And Grodian. Probably first. Paste. It's here. Paste here. Paste here, paste here, paste here, like that. Okay, good. Now then, range attack power. The concept is offensive. Get 53 itemization, roll 1 through 5. If you get 5, if I get 5, pick a different stack. If I get, if I get, oh jeez. If I get, if I get,
Okay. Now, hopefully, I can get some more talking. So, yes, range attack power. If picked, re itemization. Roll 1 to 5. If I get 5, pick a different stat. This stat will only be useful, will only be picked for items that are intended to be worn by hunters. That will er, ignore that only be useful part. This stat will only get picked for items that are intended to be worn by hunters. Attack power versus X. If picked for re itemization, yes, it's got some defensive stat. If picked for reorganization, roll 1 through 20. If it get 2 through 20, pick a different stat. <coughs> this won't be versus demons, dragon skin, elementals, insects, humanoids, or undead. If the item is an item level 61 or higher green item, an item level 55 or higher blue item, or an item level 49 or higher epic item unless it's a trinket from the Art of Dawn. This won't be the only stat on an item if the item is an item level 52 or higher for greens, 46 or higher for blues. For blues or 45 for epics, unless it's a trinket for the ardent die. Brick. Gas is an offensive stack. Hit. It picks reorganization. Roll one to two. If I get two, pick a different stack. Spell damage for specific elements. If I it picks reorganization, roll one to three. If I get two to three, pick a different stack. Spell damage versus X for its creature type. If pick for reanimation, we're 1 through 20. If I get 2 through 20, pick a different stat. This won't be versus demons, dragging in elementals, insects, humanoids, or the undead. If the item is an item level 61 or higher green item, I level 55 or higher blue item, or an item level 49 or higher epic item, unless it's a trigger for the art of dawn. This won't be the only stat in an item. If the item has an item level 52 or higher for green, 46 or higher for blues, or 40 or higher for epics, unless it's a trigger for the Argent Dawn. Spell damage slash healing. Healing counts as an offensive stat by special exception. Spell break. Spell hit. If hit for reorganization, roll 1 through 2. If I get 2, pick a different stat. Spell resistance penetration. If hit for reorganization, roll 1 through 5. If I get 3 to 5, pick a different stat. Individual resistance penetration. If it's for reanimization, roll 1 to 25. If I get 3 to 25, pick a different stat. Carry checks. Half offensive, half defensive. If picks for reanimization, roll 1 through 2. If I get 2, pick a different stat. Do not pick this stat for claw. Exists over other types of avoidance whenever possible, if on gloves or bracers. Some special effects. Also count as offensive stats. The following stats, excluding special cat stats, count as defensive stats. Agility, half offensive, half defensive. Stamina, int, counts as offensive for healers. 12% of this counts as offensive for non healers. All the enter 88% counts as defensive for non healers. Spirit, counts as offensive for healers. It picks re itemization for a feral druid or hunter item. Roll 1 through 4. If I get 2 through 4, pick a different stat. If picked for re itemization, any item is for warriors, paladins, shamans, or rogues, then roll 1 through 8. If I get th 2 through 8, then pick a different stat. Never pick this stat for warlock items. MP5. Castle offense for healers. Oh. Copy. No way. It goes uh, here. Healers, but is defensive for everyone else. While the rest is defensive for non healers. Copy. Paste. Cut. Paste. Yes, yeah, so spirit counts as offensive for healers. If pick three, I mean, they, I already said that's out. MD5 counts as offensive for healers, but defensive for everyone else. 
get ready to get there. But that's defensive for everyone else. The place isn't bad. Okay, that's not defensive. Help for five. Got for any defensive stat. Resistance to one element. It picked three ionization. Throw one through two. If I get one, pick a different stat. If I pick one resistance, get throw one through ten. If I choose, if I get three through ten, choose multiple resistances instead. When choosing multiple resistances, roll one through ten. If I get one, pick five. If I get two to three, pick four. If I get four to six, pick three. And if I get seven to ten, pick two. After a resistance has been put onto the item, I cannot choose resistance again for that item. Of course, I'll be making sure that this is not break the mags. Bonus armor. Defense, considered to be useful only to class the second block. If picked for reanimization, roll one to two. If I get two, pick a different stat. The total of this stat is increased by 25% for two in a weapon without affecting its ionization button. Don't pick the stat for item level 45 or higher leather. If item level 10 to 44 leather or, or item level 45 or higher male, they roll one to five. If I roll two to five, pick a different stat. Block chance. If picked for reanimization, roll one through two. If I pick if I get two, pick a different stat. If I roll one, then roll one to two again if the item is an offensive or hyper offensive item. If I get two, pick a different stat. Shields only. That is only shields can get block chance on it. Block chance must be the stat of the least budget if the item does not have an even stat split. <coughs> Dodge chance. If picked for reionization, roll one to two. If I get two, pick a different stat. Parry chance. Half offensive, half defensive. If picked for reionization, roll one to two. If I get two, pick a different stat. Don't pick this stat for claw. Exists so we're undersized of points whenever possible if I'm gloves or bracers. Some special effects. Obviously, I won't be putting parry chance on stuff that's made for, for example, druids. Who cannot parry. Or for other classes that cannot parry. Unless the item has no class restriction and happens to be useful for classes that can parry. So, as a result of this methodology, you'll be seeing a lot more items of spell damage, slash healing, health for five, resistances, single resistances, and spell resistance penetrations on them than before. Okay, I'm going to cut this stream short because I still got all this shit. And this shit, and all this, and this, and this, and this, left to go before I'm done revising this section. Oh, boy, I'll see you some other time.